today, there is no balance between what we are doing and what we are getting in terms of teaching our kids how to be creative and the level of engagement and how the kids enjoy learning. So we decided that we have to do something. So this is critical information that will shock you again. I conducted a survey for uh, a mini survey for, for parents. And what is really shocked me is that 61% from the parents transfer their kids from, from their previous schools to their current schools. And it's really important because it's something happened in the past. But what will happen by the end of this year, another 66% from the parents are going to transfer their kids to other schools again. So here another critical question. Why parents are always transferring their kids from one school to another school, sacrifice the fact that such kind of transfer will affect the kids psychologically and will block their learning. But still, they have no other choice rather than just transfer their kids to another school. I'm going to leave the question there for English medium schools and for teachers to answer this question. Why I'm here today? I'm here today because I want to show you a personal experience that we experienced last year and still are experiencing this year with our eldest child by helping him learn, by providing him the ways of creativity because we want to ignite his creativity and let him think creatively and we want to engage him in learning and make it fun. So I'm going to, to share with you lots of experiences. This is the first one. One of my friends told my wife that I'm going to visit you at home. My wife said, ah, sorry, we're very busy, our child has a mess next week. But for some reasons, her friend stepped inside the house. And then she found me and my son just sitting on the floor with lots of mess from this stuff spread all over the places. And then she asked her, you see that you have exams and you are playing and laughing? So my question here, do we need to be serious and strict? Why are you advising with our kids, either at school or at home? If that means we don't have to be to inject fun at our curriculum, no. Because they are kids, and what they understand very well is playing. So such kind of tools will help the child enjoy the learning, and let's have a drink. And instead of saying, let's study math, why not say to their child, let's play math, let's play English. Let's play science. So we can say, yeah, we are playing now. So he will take it as fun and he will enjoy and we can retain the information even better. One day, I just want to revise the diary, and then I found it that A is for astronaut. How come I'm going to visit that astronaut to four years old child? So we had a lot of debate with his mom. Then we called Barney, you know Barney? We called Barney, we need to urgent help, we have a big problem at home. Barney was very generous. He helped us and he gave us this episode, Barney in Outer Space. So we let him enjoy the video, he enjoyed it very much. And at the end, even with the other bonus, now we can understand that the, the astronaut is someone use a rocket to go to the space. And now he can draw a rocket alone, just by watching that movie. <laughs> then asked him, where this rocket is going? He said, he's going to the sun. Here is a good time for it. No, the rocket is going to the moon, and the rocket, the astronaut is using the rocket to go to the moon. So it's a good chance to correct the information from the beginning. This is another story we struggled with our child memorizing the data, which is very difficult and very tough. So we decided that we can withdraw all the vegetables and stick them on the wall. So they are available 24 hours, seven days, and then we can all day we can just point and then help him uh, uh, say the names. And by this we solve the problems of memorizing things. The wall is very useful because the kids like visuals. So make it visual for your child, it will help him retain the information quickly. One of the challenges that we are facing, the school assumes that the children are not native speakers, so they skip some of the difficult activities. And
and that will create a problem later when, it, because the later period is connected to something in the past. So I'm going to show you an example of sorting. How we can help a child to sort? The module activity is a little bit difficult, but if we start and break it into pieces and we start simpler and then add the complex pieces, then we can make it easier for your child. This is the first activity when we just bring a piece of paper, draw circles, and ask the child to stick the circles on, on that surface. The next step, put two colors together. The third step, put shapes. Moving to further advanced step, different shapes, different colors. Moving further, this is actually the main activity. But we cannot start with this one. We have to start simpler and gradual and make it fun. But the main objective is this one. How we can help a child to master a picture and a shadow? It's very complicated, but if we don't precondition it easily, we cannot achieve this goal at all. We have to make it fun as I mentioned earlier. We know kids like blocks. So we can bring numbers and then we can use the same blocks. They feel they are playing, but actually they are there and connecting sets to numbers. Another problem is that some of the subjects require any speakers to teach them, but actually some of the schools, there is, they are not native speakers. So again, we asked Mr. Google to help us, and he was very generous here, many of these two persons. This is Snowdy, who is living at Toyland with his friends, and this is Koyo, who is a four-year child, going to the garden every day, and every answer from all these two persons is a real experience, because Every lesson, there is a wisdom, there is objectives that suit their age. They can enjoy them, and at the same time, they can listen a lot of English, and that's to improve their communication later. Another thing, when I revise the curriculum of my child, to observe that it's based on drawing. So one of the activities for next year, they ask the, they ask the child to draw his favorite pet, and then draw what the pet is needed. How come a forest child can draw a dog or a cat. Without teaching him from playground, play, from playgroup, how to draw. So we break the drawing activity into three steps. The first one, we can, if you want to draw a caterpillar, cut circles and let the child stick. Now the child can learn how to identify different components of the of the of the whatever uh, animal. Then can trace it and color it, and finally this is the free drawing of the child. This is uh, another activity. It's an A3 size drawing book. Whenever you have any lesson, we can bring stickers, pictures from all over and make it visual, and that will enhance and return the learning. Moving, this is inside that book. This is a like and different concept. Moving to big and a small concept. And the bonus out of this, it will enable you to communicate with your child continuously, and that will enhance his confidence that the child later can express himself in English easily. Because it's visual, it's fun, and you condition him to be ready for this. This is one of the most expensive materials in your child. Really very expensive. Because you just need to keep this and use it for learning. And the bonus is that it will help the child to think from now how we can get them from local materials. And this is the activity out of it. <laughs> how we can use them to enhance demand activities. It's very simple, as I told you, very expensive. <laughs> Exposure. Exposure is important. It's not necessary to go overseas to expose your child. Exposure to you just cross the bridge with your child. And that will enable you the chance to communicate with your child and talk about water, boats, fish, and how to construct a bridge. You can go and buy vegetables and take your child with you. And that will enable the communication and help your child connect between school and real life. So, the burden on you as the parents. As I told you, don't sit and wait for school to solve your problems. You have to do your homework very well. You have to read, you have to research, you have to talk to experts. Talking to experts gave me lots of benefits. I talked to my child teacher of Arabic, and we know that all the English is good, something from English. 
and some service. So we talk about the teachers who she gave a contact for someone who she has also asked and I didn't really write to her. Because I asked my sister, told my, my son, I said no, uh, he said no, this is not for uh, it's an orange. So it's a big problem. And if four years child can say this, what I'm expecting from him to say after five years. So now it's still a restriction on this neural bayan to apply the normal. At every school, there are patients that get spikes from kindergarten. Why not they inject this Ocadan or Noral Bayan to help mm -hmm. our children? Because these two methods can help the child to read from al Masha before grade one, while the phonics system will enable the child to speak, read English <coughs> at the age of six. So we have to protect our national identity. Because we are Muslims, we are Muslims. <laughs> all the efforts to facilitate this. And this Jehovah's Sa'ad, she traveled from her pocket to Egypt to learn how to teach Nurul Bayan, and now she spread this method for free to lots of skills, lots of nations. So, another people are going to introduce to you by the girl. They are very generous. They are available 24 hours. They are available for seven days a week. They are? Mr. Google, Mr. YouTube, and the teachers' blogs outside. Because the more I research in the internet, the more I found that there's a wider gap between what we're doing here and what's available there. Uh, this is one of my favorite blogs. It can help your child very much, because even if it contains assessment, uh, Barney for sure is very nice friend for your kids. Uh, drawing is very nice, because it will help your child to express himself in colors, and crayons, and that will enable you to communicate with your child, that will enable you to understand your child very well and work with him uh, for building his future. My advice to teachers, you, to, to, to parents, you need to keep communication going between you and school, you need to keep communication going between you and your children, you need to network with professionals, you need to make this friendship, you need to let your children do the things, not just depend on the pictures and the videos. And you have to make it fun. Because children learn by playing, you know, the time based uh, methods. And finally, it's not necessary. Your child will be the first or to get 100%. Focus only, do my child enjoy learning or not? Can he apply it back? Can he connect it with the real life or not? My last message to the schools please build the bridge between you and the parents and listen to them. The parents may come up with silly questions or ideas, but it will solve your daily school problems. The future of Sudan depends on you.